Good morning everyone. Today is the last day of week 21 and we are up here in the mountains. We are going to visit a couple of the timber rattlesnake sites and see if we can find some timbers out basking or copperheads or just enjoy a good hike in the mountains. Guys, there is a water snake basking over there. We just climbed up a steep part of the hill so I'm kind of gassed but let's see if I can zoom in on him a little bit. Second snake of the day. We saw a copperhead, but I think it's one of the same ones I saw last week, so we didn't want to mess with them. All right, guys, next find of the day, a nice little slimy salamander under this log. This guy has a little bit of gray cheek salamander influence, it looks like. We're up here in northeast Georgia where there's all sorts of weird plethodonid stuff going on. Look at all these millipedes. But gonna let this guy go and keep going, see if we can find some timbers. All right, guys, well, that was pretty easy. There's a big timber rattlesnake sitting out in the open right here. We're gonna photograph this thing from a distance and then try to get a closer look. All right, well, soon after I cut the film, this girl got defensive with us. So we're gonna get a couple photos of her right here and leave her alone. I actually think this is a little boy. It's kind of hard to tell. She's definitely not gravid if she is a girl. So we're gonna leave her alone and keep herping. All right, well, that timber is right over there still. And there is actually a copperhead right there. See if I can get down. Yeah, look at that. Pretty cool. You see her coil sticking out down there too. This looks like a gravid girl, so we're going to leave her alone and let her keep cooking her babies. Alright, here's our next copperhead of the day. He's in a really hard spot to see. But if you can see in that shadow, which you might can't because my light's not going to work right, there's a copperhead tucked up under the edge of this rock. What is with the ringnecks around here being big? Just flip these two giant ones. I think one of them might be the same one from the last time I was up here, but the other one is definitely not. Freaking weird. This is big ringneck number three. All right, next snake of the day is a little copperhead here coiled up in the grass. Pretty hard to see, definitely a, an eye-opening sight to see while walking through this tall grass. Luckily, I did actually wear my boots today. So my buddy Rob, uh, Smet Logic on YouTube, posted a poll the other day asking what you wear when you're out in areas that you know there's venomous snakes on your feet. Today, I'm wearing hiking boots. I don't own snake boots, um, for the record. It's not something that I think is practical. I don't like walking around in super clunky boots, so I have a couple of pairs of these lighter boots. And I wear those when I'm going to places that are I know are super dense with venomous snakes, because the chances are, if you're stepping here, if you're stepping near a venomous snake and it's going to bite you, it's going to be a copperhead. And they're only, you know, they can't get you all the way up here on your legs, so there's no reason to really wear full-length snake boots here. But if you're in a place like Colorado, where there's large venomous rattlesnakes and tall grass, like prairie rattlesnakes, like where Smet Logic is, wearing uh, full-size snake boots like that is definitely a better choice, and you... It kind of makes up for the clunkiness of wearing the boots that you can protect yourself from a larger venomous snake like that. Uh, around here, I guess you could possibly have an encounter like that with a timber rattlesnake, but generally timber rattlesnakes around here are a lot more inoffensive than prairie rattlesnakes, so you don't have to worry about them striking all the way up on your leg as much as you would something like a prairie rattlesnake or a western diamondback. Also, you can see the area we're in today is not exactly, you know, very tall very hard to see in grass. It's kind of open and a lot of the areas you can walk in are like this kind of rocky edge but there is grass like this where if you were wearing sandals and there was a copperhead tucked down in the grass like this one over here you can see how stepping right here in sandals could be a bad idea but since I'm wearing these boots I don't really have to worry about stuff like that. I would just have to worry about a larger rattlesnake getting me up here. And the chances of that happening are slim to none in this area. All right, guys, so I guess what I'm trying to say when it comes to footwear, in my opinion, you should wear what you're comfortable with, but don't be negligent. Don't go out in a place where you know there's hundreds of venomous snakes in sandals. And even, even so, if there's hundreds of venomous snakes and you can see where you're putting your feet, that's okay. But don't go out in a place where there's hundreds of venomous snakes and you're in tall grass. Out. Oh, he's partially obscured. All right, we've walked around this tree like three times now, like all around different angles, and just now spotted this timber rattlesnake. I'm 
and zoom in on a scale so you can see what I'm talking about right there. Look at that, so well camouflaged. All right, we are gonna leave this big timber right here. Let me zoom in again so you can believe me. You can see the scales right there. There are their scales. But we're gonna leave this guy and hopefully he'll come back out a little further in the open later this afternoon. So we'll be back. And that is ring neck number four for the day. I'll take a photo of that one. In C2. So another thing Rob asked about in his snake boots versus sandals versus whatever video is what you flip with. And I think that is also a very highly situation or highly situational thing to ask because for instance, take this rock. If I try to flip this rock, we're in the middle of a busy trail. So I'm gonna mess it up and then I'm gonna put it back just to show you. If I try to flip this with my snake hook, see what happens? It just, it doesn't work. However, there's also, let's see here, put that back. If I try to flip with my hand, there's two ways I can go about it. I can jam my fingers all up under there and flip it like that. Or you can just gently flip it. You don't even have to put your, you can see there's not a snake right here, obviously. Just use your fingertips and step on the rock with the back of your foot and pry it up. And then you can put it right back down, just like that. Make sure it reseats and you're good. I can't make an example of this up here, but one instance that I do use my hook a lot for flipping is tin because it's so easy to just lift that. This is what, it's basically what these hooks are made for is for flipping tin more so than even holding snakes. That's why I carry my hook mostly. We are in the clouds. All right guys, next snake of the day. Nice adult garter snake flipped here. We're up on top of the mountain now. But this guy's in shed, so I'm gonna let him go and uh, keep looking. All right, guys, just let that garter snake go. And Ben spotted our next timber, number three of the day, right there. We can get some photos of this guy in C2 and leave him right there. Hey, Afkins. All right, guys, this is cool. This is a milk snake shed up here in Northeast Georgia. These guys are pretty common up Northwest, but not an easy snake to find in Northeast Georgia. Definitely a milk snake though, really cool. So we just took a little break up here at the top and I peeked under this rock after we've been sitting right beside it for a while and there's Copperhead. Number four for the day, right? Yep. All right guys, we're taking a break from hiking and getting some photos of this little Copperhead. This is the fifth of the day, fourth of the day. I don't know, we've seen a lot of copperheads, but figured this guy would make a good photo subject since it's a little warm right now. We're gonna wait for it to cool off and hit all the spots we've already hit one more time on our way down the mountain. Another ring neck under this really hot rock. Wow, is he probably quite warm. Get out of there. Right, oh, up. he's not happy. Here's another copperhead. First snake we've seen in a while. This guy's a little grumpier than the last one, so we're gonna leave him alone. Oh, oh. Oh. <laughs> I wasn't kidding when I said there were a lot of copperheads here. Check this guy out. In C2. Bump it up. This is definitely one of the nicer looking ones we've seen today. Here's a little idea of the habitat. Just a clearing in the forest where a little sun comes through and hits some of these rocks right here. You will not be surprised to find out I flipped yet another large ring neck. We're headed back to the car now. We're going through a different area that we haven't really hit too much yet, but we're gonna let this guy go. Well, we just flipped a tiny, so we saw a garter snake that got away, an erodia that got away under that rock, and then this really tiny ring neck. So we are like, gotta be close to 20 snakes. I'll do a tally at the end of the video and tell you exactly how many we found, but it's been a lot. But that's the rock right there that the little water, or the little, uh, yeah, the big water snake and the little ring neck were under. And I walked over here and flipped this rock and there's a juvenile garter snake. What is happening? There's so many snakes. That's baby ring neck number two, right here next to the other one. So that was a rock the little ring neck was under and this one had a bigger ring neck, but still small. Yeah. What on earth? 
This has got to be close to copperhead number 10 right here in C2. He is tucked right up underneath this rock. We're going to leave him right there. Keep looking. All right, another garter snake right here in C2. This one looks like he's been digging around. Got a muddy face. I'm going to try to get a better look at this one because he's pretty big. Come on. Good size garter snake. Oh, okay, okay. You got a bad eye? No, just covered in mud from digging, I guess. All right, go on. Whoop. So many. All right, guys, here is a spring salamander. Stop to grab one of these real quick in this creek. I see a lot for Ben because he has never seen one before. But we found one of these last time we were up here too. They seem to be pretty common in the stretch of creek, so we're just going to photograph him and let him go. And we are going to head out to road cruise after that. Here's a good looking Blue Ridge two line salamander right here past that spring in C2 under a little rock. All right, guys, we are on our way back to the car, and there's just a big, fat, healthy Nerodia hanging out right here. Hi. I don't know why Nerodia are the way they are here. Like, there's a creek way down there, but he's up here. Are you also friendly? No, no. He's not. We're gonna leave him to it, though. Here is another garter snake, a little one this time, hanging out on the side of the trail. Whole lot of snakes out today. He's gonna come and eat me. Oh, maybe not. Well, guys, there have been a lot of snakes today. We are at at least 30 snakes now. Um, there's gonna be things I didn't get footage of, so, um, I mean, I guess you can still comment. There's only 28 snakes in this video if you want, but, I mean, I don't care. Anyways, we're heading out. We're gonna go road cruise, and I will check in when we get where we're going. Found a cool little creek. All right, guys. Oh my God, there's something on my camera. All right, first snake of the night, rat snake, little bitty one right here in the same place I've now found three rat snakes over the past week, so that's cool. We're gonna get this guy off the road and keep cruising. Actually, I'm gonna get the pictures on him first. All right, pretty quickly after the first snake of the night, our second snake of the night, a little Midland water snake. Let's get this guy out of the road and keep moving. Hey guys, it is getting kind of late. We have not seen a snake in what feels like forever. So I am probably gonna call it a night here and the next video will be turtles, hopefully. We're going to go look for some alligator snapping turtles and map turtles and all that fun stuff. So I will see you guys then.